Steve with Real Progressives. And unfortunately, my frogs have left me alone with the crickets tonight. Um, but that brings me to the subject, you know, looking for hope and trying to find it amidst what it looks like a barren wasteland of democracy. I have um, taken great pains to try to find things in this world to find joy in right now as we you know, look around and we see things for what they are. The rose-colored glasses are off. And, you know, there's a point where you have to ask yourself, you know, is being hopeful helpful? Or is being hopeful, you know, a luxury um, that we cannot afford? So, you know, I, I, there is no functioning democracy in the United States right now. We saw, you know, over the course of the primary and still to this day, a, a willful blackout of truth wherever we look. There's nothing but propaganda. Our worst nightmares have begun to become true, or they may have been true for an awful long time, but we didn't know about it. Now here we are today trying to find out what is going to make us put one foot in front of the other to go on to the next step and to try to have something productive come from it. And, you know, I've of course we've got people that would say, hey, it's time for armed revolution, which I would never support. Well, I would. I, there's nothing that tells me to support it now anyway. And then you have the people that are saying, no, no, you got to give it a chance, you know. Bernie's got our revolution going and so forth. And, you know, and that's that's positive, right? And, you know, of course, we're trying to build up the Green Party. But you know, I, I there was an article I read that spoke about how in the last, like, hundred years, the Democrats or the Republicans had been number one or number two at all times, except for, I think, twice. It's pretty ominous for any kind of third party, if you will. And the reasons for that are the same reasons why there's a Donald Trump right now. Uh, why people are still constantly writing. I mean, we had somebody say Donald Trump should die. Whatever, man. You know, the propaganda war has turned everyone on its head. And it's like, what's right? What's wrong? What's true? What's not true? How do we break through this if our votes don't actually count? And, and that's a frightening, frightening thought. When you consider that the one thing that you've been told your entire life is the way to make change. It's like, get up and vote. Get out the vote. Get on out there and vote. And yet there's no confidence in our electoral process. There's no confidence that every vote is counted. And then you take into consideration electoral politics. You've got the Electoral College. And the Electoral College can give, you know, can do pretty much what it wants to do. It's not representative of you and me and every vote counting. It's representative of blocks. So in an electoral college situation, every vote doesn't count. And with electronic voting machines, every vote may not be counted. And even with paper ballots, we found hanging chads. So how do we actually get truth back into the public space? And how do we begin to make our vote count? And next, is it time to panic? Or is it just calm down, our revolution will take care of it, I, I, don't, I don't know, I don't have a lot of hope, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of like that dark cloud of napalm, I mean just, I'm just not in a real good space for positivity at the moment, I'm struggling with finding the positive, the DEA comes out and tells us that pot is going to stay the same as heroin.
That's ridiculous. You have the president come out, the Democratic president come out and say to Congress, you better get ready for TPP because it's coming. I mean, who's the idiot telling me the Democrats are the good guy again? Who's the idiot telling me that I'm supposed to not criticize Obama? Folks, there is nobody that I won't criticize at this point. I don't care about your party affiliation. I don't care about anything. <sighs> Uh-oh, candle burning. <laughs> Give me a second to get my candle story back. And, but in any event, the fact of the matter is, is that we are living in a non-functioning democracy. And a non-functioning democracy has got to be the scariest of all possible scenarios. How in the world are you ever... Got to blow it out again, folks. <laughs> so we're going to talk in the dark for a second until that gets clear. But everything that we think about in this world right now is all founded on our system of government, a trust in the police force around us. And we've got more killings than anything right now. Again, just like Obama, there's people out there saying we can't criticize the police. There's people saying that we can't criticize Hillary. Everything is about a facade. Even Joe Scarborough is coming out saying that if the New York Times said, you know, if the GOP can't get Donald Trump under wraps by Labor Day, they're going to ditch Trump. Now, who didn't see that coming? Who didn't see the idea that Trump was just a prop to make a ridiculously bad candidate in Hillary look marginally better? I mean, seriously. There is, what, what is true? I mean, seriously, what is true? You got Tim Canova down in Florida this morning debating with Debbie What's-Her-Name Schultz. She's not even acknowledging that there was a debate going on. It's lie after lie after lie after lie. And every publication you read, every single one of them, you've got to sit there and say, is this a bunch of bullshit? Is there anybody, anybody at all, you know, even remotely trying, you know, to present anything of substance, of truth and value? I'm really struggling with finding something to be positive about. And wars, look, we're over there bombing Libya again. I mean, why am I supposed to be okay with the Democrats? Why are they supposed to be this lesser evil that I can't see? I can't even see. Well, because they don't say bad words that, you know, they say bad words. They just have slightly better bedside manners, as someone once said. But they're killing people with impunity. I mean, they, people are just dying. I'm struggling to find the hope. I'm struggling to find the positive message. You know? And then you've got another Keystone Pipeline out there, you know, on the Indian Reservation. I mean, the Sioux are fighting hard. And what's happening? We just got through Keystone XL. There's going to be tens of thousands. I mean, they're going to just keep pumping these things at us. Who's our champion? Who is actually fighting for us? Is anybody? I mean, it's like you got to just check out the check in. You almost have to be completely and utterly willing to numb your brain and just go with the flow to say that this is in any way, shape, or form okay. What do we do? I, you know, I. I'm asking you folks, for real. And please, seriously, keep...
think about it for a minute. What do we do? I mean, I think bringing awareness to these issues is the best thing that we as real progressives can do. But in terms of actionable mobilization, what can we actually do? I mean, you can volunteer to be poll workers. Uh, you can help out in any way, shape, or form in your local area, um, you know, election board. You know, I mean, you can volunteer a bunch of different ways, but how does that guarantee a fair election? How does that guarantee a fair election? And I'm not talking about voter fraud. I don't buy voter fraud. Voter fraud's a lie. But I do definitely buy election fraud. And that's the foundation of our democracy. Being able to trust that. So what do we do? How do we demand, demand that money get out of politics? How do we demand that our vote count? How do we overturn Citizens United? How do we make pot legal so that people aren't in jail and families aren't destroyed? How do we demand that they listen to us? They certainly didn't give a crap during the primaries. And if you look back over and over and over again, you can see that they don't care about it now. I mean, I'm scared to death. The thing I'm more scared of than anything right now, to be honest with you, is the idea of Hillary Clinton getting in office and her supporters blocking us from having an honest critique of the evil she does. That, that, that's probably my biggest fear right now. Not her evil, just her supporters' blind willingness to support and defend her. I mean, what do we have to do to fix this? You know, I'm not advocating not voting. I'm telling you to vote. But the reality is, is that there's not a lot of, there's not a lot of confidence built into the system. So I'm at a loss. I really am. I want to I want to mobilize people in a way. I want to tell people, I want to join with people to say, here is something concrete that we can do to fix this. Here is something absolutely concrete that you can do tomorrow morning or tonight that will bring about change. That'll stop police from being, you know, hyper aggressive and police people like they're human beings. Uh, to make our political officials understand that we don't want to be responsible for any more deaths around the planet. You know, from our war machine. I mean, are we just checking out until climate change takes us? You know, until some catastrophic environmental disaster occurs. It's really not intended to be a doomsday speech here. This is really about what do we do? I want solutions. And I am beyond frustrated that I can't, even if I hate the candidate, that I can't at least guarantee that that jackhole was elected fairly. If America's a bunch of idiots and they would vote for an idiot, hey, that's democracy, right? But if we would go ahead and vote and get an idiot without a guarantee that we actually put the idiot in office, that is just just overwhelming to me. So, one of the things that I'm considering doing, because part of Real Progressives has been beyond just you know, doing these live streams and putting articles out there. In the background, we're building a website and we're thinking about how can we be a hub, a connecting point between different mobilizations, different causes, you know, like stovepipes, but yet a universal approach to each of these different causes. Because we want to find the right combination of activity, motivation, and togetherness, organization. 
so that we can affect the change that needs to happen in this country. And honestly, I'm perplexed. I don't know the answer. I don't know the answer. And I'm hoping you guys continue to feed us answers. We've got a broad platform. We've got a lot of people that we can talk to. The more answers we have from you, the more logical, intelligent, non-reactionary ideas that come from you, the more actionable they are for us to coordinate. So think about it. Start really, really putting your head to, you know, heads together and brainstorming. You know, I don't see anybody out there, you know, that has really, really taken the fight where it needs to be. You know, I'm really happy that Jill Stein's out there right now. I'm going to support her with all I've got. But we, we know Jill is up a vertical that most of us won't be able to scale. I hope she can. I really do. I'll do everything I can to help her. But just looking at the way our elections go in this country, I don't have a lot of hope. I think it's in our hands. What do you all think? I think that it really comes down to us taking action. We can't wait on our elected officials to actually do something right. We have got to force their hand in a non-violent way. In a non-violent way. Why? Because we don't need to die right now. This is not a life or death moment yet. Not in terms of mobilizations. we got to think long term. But there are people today that don't have long term to wait for us to get our act together. So I feel a tremendous amount of responsibility, even though I, I'm struggling, I'm spinning, I'm in the hamster wheel. I'm trying to come up with ideas. We've got some good ones, but there's no guarantees. You know? So, if you guys can think of something, let us know. This is a community effort here. We're not just some publication. We're a movement. And we're actually doers. We want to be a part of this thing for real, for real, not just yap about it. You guys help us. You guys help get the word out. We're looking for ideas. Looking for meaningful ways of doing things. We don't want to be just those people yelling at the wall. We want to be able to make actionable mobilizations that produce results. Anyway, guys... Thank you so much for being with us. You've made this entire this you've made this mission worthwhile. This thing has become something so important to each one of us on the team that we do it around the clock and we love it. But we want to do more. We want to do more. And we hope you guys take the opportunity to partner with us. Take the opportunity to help us make change in America for the good of the 99%. Anyway, you guys get some sleep. I'm going to go ahead and nod off myself. This is Steve Real Progressive saying I love you and keep up the fight, folks.